Um, yes, I am going to bring some blackness. Some blackness. So last week we were all lovely and ethereal and white, weren't we? And all floaty and light and, and, and bright with, um, with Whistler's symphonies in white. Um, and this morning, the complete opposite. I thought, you know, what am I going to do today? Well, I'm going to do exactly the opposite. So we're going very, very dark. We're going so dark. We're going black. And the painting that we're going to look at today is this one. This one. It is one of Goya's, Francisco Goya, Spanish painters, black paintings. It's the blackest of the black paintings. He painted 14 of them. Um, so this was, this was created between um, about 1820 and 1823. It's now in the Prado in Madrid. Um, and this is sort of loosely titled Saturn, not Satan, Saturn devouring one of his children or Saturn devouring his son. Um, nice. I told you we were going dark, so we're going dark in colour and we're going dark in subject matter. So Saturn, now he, this Saturn is his Roman name. Um, his Greek name is Kronos. We've met Kronos. Do you remember where we've met Kronos? Let's lighten it up a little bit. We met Kronos when I talked about this painting, um, The Birth of Venus, because Kronos overthrew his father Uranus and for good measure he castrated him. Uh, this is like right back at the beginning of the world. Um, and he castrated him and he threw his genitals into the sea from which the beautiful Venus was born. So that was Kronos. Let's go back to black. Um, Kronos, in fact, then hears a uh, prophecy. So Kronos gets all grown up. He's overthrown his father. Um, uh, he is married to Rhea. And he hears a prophecy that one of his children will become more powerful than him and will overthrow him. And he doesn't like that at all. So he does the natural thing in his mind. This is Greek mythology. And every time Rhea gives birth, he takes the baby immediately and he swallows the baby whole. Um, and this happens five times. So poor, poor Rhea just you know, loses all of her children straight away. Um, the sixth time, she's, she's, she thinks, right, okay, I'm gonna get him this time. I've got a plan. And so she makes a plan and her sixth child, Zeus, is born and immediately she wraps a stone instead of the child in um, in a, a swaddling clothes or blanket or whatever and she hands this stone to Kronos and Kronos swallows the stone and because he's just swallowing them down whole not here but we'll come on to that uh, because he's swallowing them down whole he doesn't notice and so Zeus survives and Zeus, as we know, he lives into adulthood and, um, and when he's fully grown and powerful enough, he confront, confronts Kronos and he makes him disgorge basically everything that he's swallowed. And so Kronos disgorges, um, first of all, this stone, which becomes Mount Parnassus. So that's where that comes from. <laughs> Who knew? And, and then he disgorges Zeus's five siblings. Um, so uh, big players in Greek mythology. Thank goodness he disgorged them. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had uh, Poseidon, the god of the, the oceans, Hades, god of the underworld, um, Demeter, who's the god of the harvest, Hestia, god of the hearth, and Hera, who is Zeus's, becomes Zeus's wife. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so all of these, uh, and so th this is the, the story of Kronos. Um, now, of course, in this, in this image, I mean, this is a really disturbing image. In fact, this is, to my, for my money, this is probably one of the most disturbing images in art history. Um, certainly, if you go back to the, the, the 19th century, I mean, you know, nowadays, I think artists kind of live to, to shock. So I'm sure there are many more. Yeah, um, 
more shocking images. Uh, but this is this is pretty this is pretty grim. I feel, um, and it's pretty grim for, for several reasons. First of all, look, he's not he's not swallowing this child whole, and and he's bitten off the head first, and then he's um, and then he's he's got the the arm. He had this huge void, this huge black void of a mouth he's biting down to the the elbow about to to bite part of the the arm off so that's that's pretty nasty um and secondly this isn't a little baby and i don't know whether this makes this better or worse but i think kind of to my head it makes it a bit worse because this is a little person which or um which suggests that it, it has sort of a cognizance of what might be about to to, to happen to, to to him or her so that there's sort of that element this sort of understanding of what's happening slightly that's that's quite creepy amongst all the other incredibly creepy things um you know just look at the way in this fairly monochrome painting goya has added in these these splashes of, of blood so around where he's bitten the head off and then and then down the arm and this red red is a color that always thrusts itself forward in in paintings it's a warm color so it's something that you're always going to notice and here just against the monochrome that is that effect is really amplified and then and the way he's squeezing he's just you know he's squeezing this little body is almost like, like a little i don't know gingerbread man or something if, if you're going to sort of take your your mind off what's really happening um but the, the kind of oh it's 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 horrible and then and the madness in his face and um, the popping eyes the the wild hair and you kind of think well is he was he mad before probably a little bit or has he become mad at, at the, you know the realization or the understanding of what he's what he's actually doing um it's it's not comfortable viewing this this, this painting at all his body too it's sort of weird bony body his um which one's that his right elbow sort of is really you can really sort of see the, the bone but it's like his skin is sort of melting from his body and then down to the right hand side of the the, the painting or the uh, and so his his left leg there's a, there's a bit of anatomy <laughs> For his left leg, I don't know what that is. So it's almost as though Kronos in this act um, is is sort of coming apart. This you know this is not a stable person. Um, obviously eating his eating his own child. Um, so you may well wonder why goya painted this who goya painted this painting and the rest of the the, the black paintings for um, i said that now this is um in the the prado in madrid but in fact goya painted this uh directly onto the wall in his home so goya let's show you goya this is um this is goya um i can't actually remember when this is from about 1850 Dean, I think this this self portrait. So this is this is probably about five years before he um, before he started painting the the, the black paintings. Um, so uh, yes, so Goya he retreated to a house called La Quinta del Sordo, or the um, the house for the uh, the house of the deaf man um, in. Uh, 1818 1819 um, and he painted directly onto the wall in in this house which was very appropriately named for him by the way because he had a, um, a very grave illness in his 40s in his mid 40s and was profoundly deaf at the age of 46 um, so Quinta del Sordo lived in the, the the deaf man's house um and and he he painted on the the, the side of on on his walls so oil this was originally oil onto onto plaster and um saturn de devouring his children was painted in <laughs> guess where none other than the dining room so i don't know whether he had a, a sense of humor um but if i say the dining room that that sort of suggests that he might have given dinner parties and that, and that many people might have been um you know witness to to this 
image, uh, that wasn't the case at all. He lived a very reclusive life just with a housekeeper. Um, so I mentioned right at the beginning that these paintings are completely the opposite to Whistler's white symphony paintings um, you know, that were meant to be discussed and sort of debated. These paintings were absolutely for Goya, for himself, um, as some kind of expression, I think. I'll, I'll come on to that in a second. Um, and they, they weren't, they weren't at all meant for, for public consumption. So then the, the question is, you know, why, why was he so dark? Why was he so dark at this time? Um, well, he lived through quite a lot. So Goya was, in fact, he started life, um, or sort of the, the beginning of his career, when his career took off, he was court painter. Um, to the the Spanish um, monarchs, and did you know, and and did really well. Then, unfortunately, Spain kind of went to pot. Um, the the monarchy just kind of uh, treated every everybody really badly and then um, Napoleon's troops invaded and that made everything a whole lot worse and then the monarchy was restored which made things uh, just that little bit worse again um, and uh, and in fact Goya him himself so he'd, he'd seen a lot these were really really dark years for, for Spain and Goya had had seen a lot and he actually began his his painting went from quite light-hearted lovely sort of pastoral scenes you know just um, really you know lovely um, to quite dark satire um, and he got hauled up in fact in front of the Inquisition when the the monarchy was restored um, a because of his um, satirical paintings and B let's have a little bit more lightness B because of this painting here this is Maya um, Maya nude he painted her in the same position dressed and then and nude and in Spain at this point you know you just you couldn't you couldn't paint women in the in the nude um, so he was hauled up in front of an inquisition um, you know his his uh, character was brought into question um, and the only reason that he survived was because um, the Ferdinand the second seventh Ferdinand the seventh who was the monarch um, Recogn you know, knew that Goya was a fantastic painter. In fact, he's quoted as saying, you know, you should be garroted, Goya, but I'm going to spare you because you're such a, a talented artist. Um, and so at this, it's at this point that he retreats to the Quinta del Sordo, Sordo. Um, and he um, is, you know, he's, he's obviously in a very bad state of mind. He's probably quite frightened um, and in fact, just for the, the last three years of his life, he actually left Spain. I think he was very scared that, that bad things might happen to him. And he, he died in, um, in Bordeaux in 1828. Um, but also, you know, he couldn't unsee and, and unexperience the horrific things that he'd experienced. Um, and so I think this was all coming out in these, in these very, very dark paintings, um, most notably in this one. Um, so, painted in oil onto plaster, now in the Prado, um, so this, um, this painting and the other black paintings have been transferred onto canvas, a very, very painstaking task um, that happened at the end of the 19th century um, and, uh, and now all displayed in a room together. In the in the Prado in Madrid, it's really quite powerful. People are going to walk into the room and they're like, "Oh, it's all very dark. It's all very monochrome. It's all very black." So there we go. Good. Turn back comments and let's try and lighten the mood. <laughs> there we go. And let's get rid of him. Oh, there we go. Ah, uh, oops, I haven't turned pictures off. Oh, let me just show you this one. Let's lighten the mood. How about this? Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that gorgeous? That was sunrise last week. There we go. Um, yeah, really grim, really grim. Um, yeah, I can't, sorry. <laughs> where, you have, where you have lightness, you have darkness. And that, and that is, um, 
that's dark. So that, I hope that was um, I hope that was visceral and nasty and dark enough for you, Ricky. You've always loved that painting. Yeah, it's kind of. Oh, thank you, Caroline. You've shared my Facebook page to a local art group. That's really nice. Thank you very much indeed. That's really kind of you. Everybody that is sharing, everybody that's liking what I'm doing. That really, that's that's so great. That's so great. Um, and yeah, doing more. So Friday night, um, Friday evening at six o'clock, I'm doing a little bit more about um, Greek mythology. So four paintings, just 10 pounds, join me on a, on a Zoom meeting when we'll delve into, I think, uh, I think four, four works, a little bit more depth. Um, Zeus will make an appearance, but not, um, not in the form of almost being eaten by Kronos. You might be, you might be pleased to hear or you might be disappointed to hear. I don't know, people do seem to like these dark paintings. It's like, don't do nice ones about lovers and lovely things. Do really horrible subjects. Um, yes, sunrise in complete contrast to the horror. Absolutely. I've redeemed myself, <laughs> Ricky. <laughs> You're terrible. So dark. Anyway, I do wish everybody a very, very lovely week. I will be back on Thursday with some more weird and wonderful offerings. I will be back on Friday evening if you join the um, the, the Zoom tour. Um, and then we've got another Pepped Up by Paintings curated canapes and cocktails that's coming out on Saturday. So have a good week, everybody. Thank you for joining. Bye.